Hello and welcome to another episode of The Real Shots of 56. Tonight is another new episode of Evening Crypto. And tonight we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to bring you an article, sort of the news going on around cryptocurrency uh, with Chainlink. I've told you guys I've, I've been a, a, a pretty big fan of Chainlink. And for full transparency, I do want to provide a little bit more information and insights um, that has been given from Glassnode. They did a pretty, pretty detailed article as to what's going on within the team. It's sort of the spending and who holds what within the Chainlink team, including the CEO, uh, Sergey, and I can't pronounce his last name, so I'm not going to try. So, you know, I have, I have told you guys in numerous occasions that I do, I do deem Chainlink uh, as one of the proje projects that's actually bringing something different, something new and useful to the ecosystem with their Oracle system, setting up Oracles for uh, blockchains to interoperate amongst each other. Something that is not uh, currently, something that is currently missing in this industry is for blockchains to be able to talk to each other and co-mingle, co, uh, co if you will. And uh, Chainlink is providing that sort of um, that that sort of information hub for these different um, chain links or um, different blockchains. Although there is no, I mean, this this is not actually out there and working yet because huh, pretty much is at this point only available for Ethereum smart contracts. Uh, the goal is that you'll be able to take a smart contract from Ethereum and uh, be able to operate it on say EOS or Cardano or any of these other platforms that operate or have smart contract capabilities. Chainlink is providing a solution to that. Um, I know that there's some projects out there such as Cardano uh, ADA uh, is trying to build inherent interoperability uh, within its chain so that it is able to communicate its smart contracts to other chains such as Ethereum and, you know, many others. Uh, it, it's definitely a, a very daunting task because, again, no one no one out here in the ecosystem has actually built anything that can interoperate with other chains. So Chainlink does build something of value within the ecosystem. It is the first mover. It does have the advantage and you can see it reflected in you know the, the, the recent history of Chainlink uh, after it's debut uh, back in September in 2017 via ICO uh, as a ER, ERC20 token. <clears throat> Chainlink, um, you know, has been climbing the charts ever since its inception date. And, uh, you know, so it does deserve plenty of praise from the market currently sitting at 17 uh, in uh, coin market cap. It had reached up to, uh, I believe, number 14 is the highest I've ever seen it. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it has definitely climbed the charts in a big way in the last couple of years. So um, I think it's worth mentioning and just going over what the uh, internal spending looks like for Chainlink. So you guys can make it an educated decision. I don't hold any link for, again, full transparency, but I do let you guys know that it is a good coin to trade. There is some liquidity in it. And, uh, you know, it's just been it's it's just been one of those projects that has been trending, in the, especially in the last year, 2019. Uh, it has been trending tremendously. And so a lot of people have benefit from that. Uh, I think I have myself as well. And uh, so, you know, I think it's it's worth our time to take a look at what Chainlink is doing within the inside, the spending, basically focusing on who owns what, where that Chainlink token is uh, at the current moment. So you guys can make an educated decision again in the future if you want to invest or stake Chainlink. Then you know this. I, I I do find this article by Glassnode to be a very um, not only a good read but just you know very insightful. Um, so we'll do we'll do a, a quick rundown of current um, market cap, and uh, we'll get into the article, and then we'll do the PA at the end. So let me know let me know if you guys like that format better, and we can start doing that. Um, and, and you know maybe you guys like that, but let me know down in the comments. Otherwise. I don't, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if um, if that is something that you guys would prefer. All right, so who is chain? Uh, who is uh, Glassnode, right? 
Glassnode is a blockchain data provider that generates innovative on-chain market intelligence and tools for digital asset stakeholders, enabling them to make more informed decisions and help foster wide market maturity. I think it's a very, very noble thing to do. Uh, I'll leave this uh, link in the description of the video for you guys to click on it and uh, read if you want. So Chainlink is a decentralized Oracle network, which allows Ethereum smart contracts to securely connect to external APIs, payment systems, and other data sources to prevent the need for a trusted third party. Multiple independent nodes collectively determine the accuracy of an external input before it is written into a smart contract. The Link token is used to pay node operators to retrieve data from off-chain feeds, formatting it into blockchain compatible formats and performing off-chain computations. It is also staked by node operators to guarantee uptime, correct data, and honest behavior. In the past three months, Link has seen a substantial increase in price due to the release of its mainnet, a series of partnerships with the likes of Google and Oracle, and getting listed on Coinbase. We covered Link's recent price action in Glassnode's issue number two. ICO distribution. Chainlink was initially distributed through an ICO back in September 17th, 2017, and a total of 1 billion link were minted. 35% was available during the public sale, 35% was allocated for node operator incentives, and 30% went to the companies to support the development of the Chainlink protocol. So that goes to the internal team. And here we have the token sale terms and uh, a graph showing, you know, where each token went um, or was allocated, as we previously stated. Uh, total supply distribution below, we show the current distribution of Link. We've included known team wallets, the node operator allocation, known exchange wallets, as well as an aggregate of all other unlabeled Link holding addresses. So here's a breakdown, the distribution, um, other wallets, exchanges. Uh, we'll get into the exchanges uh, down below here in a little bit, but it's, it's very, very interesting. It also, you know, sort of raises a red flag uh, in a very, very particular way. And I'll, I'll explain that um, team wallet movements in the above chart. It's interesting to note that the team allocated allocation has shrunk by 6.8 percent. Not that whole, not that much since the ICO indicating that the, the team has sold, moved some tokens. Below is a graph showing the balance of the team reserve over time. Each address was sent about 50 million tokens right and we see the the distribution and also we see how the team has sold off about 6.8 percent uh translating to about somewhere close to 18 million worth of um link tokens that have been sold back into the market or thrown back into the market to fund further fund the product and and uh you know continue to develop uh, the the uh, protocol. So the Chainlink team moved a large portion of tokens through the end of 2017 and early 2018 from such address. Recently, in early July 2019, they started moving tokens from this address. The first of these transactions happened just two days after Link's major increase in price, indicating that it's not just investors that are capitalizing on the tokens rise into the top 20. The team have yet to officially comment on this. Right, and we do see here some of the, the transaction breakdown. Uh, you guys can actually link, uh, click on these and uh, verify for yourself if you, if you so wanted to. Uh, in total, about 17.9, 18 billion um, has, I'm sorry, 18 million uh, has moved from their orig original wallet. Of the 3.5 million links sent by such address, an estimated 50 to 90% went into Binance within four hops of the initial transaction. This is this is what uh, causes a red flag in my eyes. As, speci as specified in the token sale terms, these were allocated to the team to support the protocol development. So this movement was likely to, like, this movement was likely the company liquidating a portion of their holdings to secure future funding. This correlates with a recent post from Sergey, the CEO of Chainlink, announcing that. They're growing their team significantly. So it kind of makes sense there. Link's circulating supply of 350 million, as reported by CoinMarketCap, only counts the tokens sold to the public in the ICO. After taking the team's sell-off into account, the actual circulating supply is closer to 
367 million. The below graph shows the distribution of recalculated circulating supply. If you guys want to take a look at that. Um, and here's here's the, the uh, important part in my eyes. Uh, exchanges compared to other ERC20 tokens on the market, Link has a comparatively low number of tokens stored in exchange wallets at only 10.7% of the total supply and 29.2% of the circulating supply. Across the different exchanges, Binance has the largest market share by a considerable margin with 93.4% of the tokens being stored in their wallets. This is unsurprising given how high Link's daily trading volume is on the exchange. So this is the one thing that in my eyes does raise a bit of concern because again, with the whole move by Binance moving away from US customers and pretty much designating the US based um, platform to a different company altogether, the Binance does not own the Binance USA exchange that is being built as we speak and has yet to be launched. Uh, they will have no stake in this. They will have some sort of influence, but they don't have stake in it. They don't own it. They, it's not a partnership. They're basically handing this project off to a third party company that, uh, again, has has no relationship other than um, other than, you know, just sort of a, a, a more than a friendly relationship with CZ and Binance. So the concern is once Binance goes away is and this is unknown, but you can kind of say, OK, you would think and figure that Link would be included in the new platform, but it's not yet, uh, you know, something that is with certainty. There is a, a, a chart with the um, with the tokens and uh, currencies that will be sold via the new Binance USA exchange. However, I am not 100 uh, percent positive that Chainlink has made it in there. So with Binance holding about 93.4% of the tokens um, being st or, or holding a considerable amount uh, of tokens, let me correct that, Ho holding a very considerable amount of the tokens available in Binance's uh, exchange, all that all that volume is going to be now secluded and um, and separated from US customers, which again, U.S. customers provide about 15% of the total international um, international liquidity in these exchanges. By taking that away, you know, I'm just I'm just really concerned about what's going to happen there if if that all that volume goes away. And same goes for a lot of projects, right? But this is a prime example of you know these this is the the uh, this is us looking at it with a magnifying glass because we can see how much or, or what percentage of tokens is being held in Binance's wallets. So, you know, now taking away the U.S. customers, you take away a lot of liquidity. And, uh, you know, what is going to happen to the price of Link and other um, tokens and uh, projects that will not be available to U.S. based customers. So tread lightly, be careful, um, you know, again, until the new U.S. Binance, and 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 the, the other thing is, the new platform by Binance. We just don't know how many current Binance customers in the U.S. are actually going to migrate to that exchange. I know that I personally was looking for a different platform to trade on, uh, besides you know Coinbase and GDAX and and uh, Robinhood. You can't even trade. Um, I, I I'm not familiar with uh, the Winklevoss's uh, platform. So I am looking currently, I think I've, I've got one picked out, but, but you know, how many of us are actually switching to a completely different platform and not really are, are, are thinking about trading in Binance USA platform? Eventually, a lot of us might come back and gravitate towards that platform, Binance USA, um, if the offering is better, right, than what we are currently uh, having. So... Um, again, that raises a concern in my eyes, although Chainlink has a tremendous community and just a lot of uh, a lot of support from its community. So, I mean, uh, I am concerned, but I do think th this might be a temporary move. Uh, liquidity might be on the lower end for, for a while, but then I would hope that the uh, liquidity would actually increase after a while and, uh, you know, more and more investors that also are coming into the space would also support it. 
uh, this project and, you know, among many, many others, right? So I want to leave that with you guys. Let me know what you guys think of this. If I'm completely offline here or off track, uh, or maybe you guys share the same concern. Let me know down in the comments. If you find this information useful, uh, go ahead and click on the link down below. Uh, there'll be a link to this article here. And you guys can uh, continue reading on. Uh, very, very insightful information. Very, um, I think, just very useful information, uh, especially for those who are thinking of investing in, uh, in Chainlink. All right. So let's move on to the charts now. Uh, again, let me down, let me know down below if you guys like this, uh, prefer this format, and uh, we can always, um, you know, make changes. Um, all right. So going into the charts now. Bitcoin has been trading around 11,286. Um, not a whole lot of movement. Again, since we started the, uh, since the beginning of the um, past weekend, we did see this smaller dip happening here, about 5% total. And uh, you know, just kind of been stagnating in this range here. Now, very interesting. I do want to bring something new that that has been happening since we uh, did our last video back on Friday. Back on Friday, um, we did see, I was telling you guys, we did escape. We did um, finish out the move here. Uh, it, we, it turned out to be the um, the Adam and Eve formation playing out uh, where the measure move was was letting us know that this would be likely the end of this move uh, if this uh, played out, which it did. And we actually hit it right here. We also moved up above this um, bull flag. I was calling this a bull flag uh, from the beginning, and uh, we did escape this formation here. We we pierced through the top resistance line here, and actually have remained above it. Now, uh, although we are in a seemingly downtrend, it has also respected this the top of the bull flag as support now, which is not too surprising. I was I was actually thinking that this might actually hold as support here. Uh, even though we are in sort of a downtrend, but we are mimicking this right here, right? We are mimicking this formation on a micro trend. This is more of a macro trend, right? This this took a while. This this let's go back here. This move was initiated back in June 21st, so two months ago almost. And so this was more of the macro trend. Here's our bull flag, and now we did escape the bull flag. We're on top of it now. And uh, we initiated this movement here back in August 4th, getting on top of the formation, breaking out, finishing the move, confirmed. Now we're moving on to other things. This is, we're no longer in this pattern here. We're no longer in this trade. Now we're over here, right? So now again, we are mimicking what happened back here in June. We're mimicking that in August. We're also building another bull flag here. And if this does play out to the upside, Again, here is the measured move, right? Say we were to break out here, it does. Uh, here will be the breakout move, and here's where it could likely um, stop, right? Setting a higher high from this high point or this local high, this past high, and, and stopping, coming to a stop around 12,450 to about 13,000 or 12,500. Sorry, 12,450 to 12,500. That's where we would likely, if we we would have to obviously break out of this sooner rather than later, later to have this actually hold as the true outcome. If we keep um, going downwards uh, on a more elongated uh, time frame, say you know this takes another week, then you know we're going to decline here, and then the measured move, say you know happens to break out down here, then this would be our measured move. But as of right now, say that we do break out sooner rather than later that's our move right there does coincide with previous resistance uh, we would stop there and see what Bitcoin does and reassess from there uh, overall there's plenty of uh, bullish sentiment this was just a minor correction at five percent but you know again we are still trading in a bullish formation a micro trend but still a bullish formation uh, this is this is consolidation and uh, it, it, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty healthy. I'm not I'm not concerned about that. It could still break down to the downside. And if it does, say that it does break down to um, it ends up resolving to the downside. This would be our expected move here. I did get rid of some of the uh, support lines that I had drawn from for you guys down here. But let's let's actually uh, put a uh, support line right where the move would actually end up um, being. 
which would also coincide with the uh, 236 Fibonacci um, right here, support line, right? Um, from this pivot low, from this pivot high to this pivot low, um, that uh, breakdown move would coincide with the two point, uh, the 236 uh, Fibonacci extension, right? So uh, again, uh, just another reminder that these technicals do work and you should use them. They're at your disposal. And if you guys need any help figuring these things out, definitely let me know. Leave it down in the comments or um, get a hold of me on Twitter at TheRealShot256. Uh, also on Instagram, same handle. Um, so this would be, you know, the short time or the short, um, yeah, short time frame uh, of things would be that, right? We also did have this sort of resist or uh, support here break down. And, uh, you know, once we broke down, I mean, we, we, we definitely um, can say that we're, we're now... Uh, we now broke this line of support and, uh, you know, we're definitely, you know, still within that bear flag, but there, there's, there's been a slight change in things. And so therefore we needed to reassess. This does look again, like consolidation for the time being. And, uh, you know, again, it, it, it's in the middle of this channel. So, um, if we do get back down into this area here, uh, where the 382 is coming in, nothing to worry about there we we should expect to bounce there we usually do get a bounce at 382 and come back and retest the top of this uh resistance line uh eventually down here at the 0.5 uh, so you know the more time we wait uh this this line is coming in this resistance line is uh coming down as well so we would be coming down to meet at the 0.5 uh, if once say that we do come back and retest this prior or this um, support line down here at the 382 and then bounce up to about the 0.5. OK, so that is to be expected in the next week or so. Uh, in my in my eyes, I think that will play out again. I, I don't 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 hold me to the fire. I, I don't have a um, obviously <laughs> you guys know I don't have a, um, a magic uh, wand or, or, or a crystal ball to, to point out exactly when this is going to happen and how it's going to happen. This is, you know, again, based on technicals and uh, also past history and, uh, you know, these tools that are that are here to, to kind of let us help us map out these moves. Right. So um, that's the two hour. I am keeping the two hour as something of relevance because it has uh, helped me trade quite a bit and just has helped me call the support and resistance lines very, very, very much on the dot. So uh, I am holding that uh, to candle as my main reference point as of yet or as of uh, right now, because again, it just has been proven to really call the shots. And uh, I will continue to use that until it's no longer calling the shots like it has. Uh, let's look at the four hour. Uh, let's actually drink up a bit so we can fit it into the screen a little better. This prior move, I think, is out of the picture at this point, so we're going to get rid of it. But again, there was two possibilities. We did get the, uh, the Adam and Eve to play out. Um, currently, the four hour is looking pretty bullish, trying to get into the uh, bullish control zone and uh, build on this here. So, you know, it, it looks like we might get we might get a retest of this resistance line here coming around, say, 11,600 and then possibly um, breaking down from there and coming to retest the support line here. And if we do break out again, that, that would be our expected move. If we do fall underneath this area here, then, um, and actually let's bring our, let's bring our uh, moving averages back in here. So there's, there's gonna be plenty of support coming in, but if we do break down the 377 is coming in right above this here, which also coincides again with the uh, 236. If we do break down from there, I do think we're going to have to, we're, we're, we're going to see uh, a pretty sizable dip down to this prior area of support here around 9,400. And if we do break down from there, then, you know, it's, it's all hell breaking loose pretty much uh, at uh, around 8,900. And I do think um, maybe, maybe just maybe this previous area of support might be coming into play and uh you know acting as support but it's way down here at the low 8000 range right low 8000 range which would be two things we could be in for a trend reversal which you know could be time to start thinking about hey or you know maybe we're back into you know I, I, were we not 
out of the bull market, or I'm sorry, were we not out of the bear market at all, and we're still in a bull or a bear market, and this was just a bull trap, right? These things have happened in the past with Bitcoin, so you know, let's not rule it out. Let's let's not panic yet. Let's not get go there yet. But that is the ultimate bearish case scenario, right? I mean, completely ultimate bearish case scenario here, uh, if that were to happen. But again, Bitcoin would have a lot to work, a lot of work to do to the downside for it to actually get to the, these levels here at uh, low 8,000, high 7,000s. Uh, and again, we would we, we would get more. We, we would start looking at this with a more bearish eye. We'd also fill the gap at 8,500. And, uh, you know, there's there's many um, there would be many scenarios that we can think about from that point forward. We'd have to <clears throat> excuse me. We'd have to reassess. Uh, if and when we do get to this area here, that's the more bearish case scenario. OK, uh, but right now, let's forget about that and actually talk about what uh, we actually think is going to happen, which, again, we're still forming a bear or a bull flag here. And it does look like it wants to come and retest this this area here. And if it does, let's let's go over the uh, measure move again, coinciding with uh, 12,450 to 12,500. That would be the measured move there. And then we reassess again. We're This this, this is a game of re reevaluations, right? So once we hit or finish a move, then we take a look at what's going on there. See if it holds. If it does, then, you know, let's look at the next step. What, what is what is it? What are what are the charts telling us uh, might be happening? Right. Um, so, again, I'm leaning more towards a retest of this upper resistance line and then a retest of the bottom support line down here. Um, that's what the RSI is currently at this very moment telling me. We did get above the 21 exponential here on the RSI, so it does tell me that we do have some uh, some conviction to the upside. We just we have more buyers and sellers at this point, right? That can tr turn around at any point or any moment. Um, now, the thing that is of concern, again, uh, is the trading volume in the last 24 hours. We took a look at this here. Uh, 24 hour volume is pretty low, low on the lower side, certainly. And we do see it reflected here on the charts as well. So um, just a decreasing volume uh, altogether here. Uh, again, we did get squeezed out here, down here. We were talking about this about a week ago um, before we headed, headed into the weekend. And then we get we did get a little bit of a squeeze and a move uh, and a move to actually play out. Uh, but then, you know, uh, couldn't hold these levels up here at uh, 12,000 and we quick, quickly came back down into $11,000 range. Uh, and again, we're sitting underneath the exponential here on the, the um, yeah, the, the uh, exponential down here on the volume side of things. So it is telling us that volume is very, very low. We are going to have to see another breakout, um, you know, and uh, we're going to have to see more volume come in here if we want to have a breakout or, or a decisive move. Again, uh, we're still within this declining volume um, um, signature here, uh, which also is telling that Bitcoin is still consolidating in this huge this huge pattern here. Just, I mean, more consolidation here, right? So not 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 a bad thing. Uh, in fact, it's a positive thing because again, um, some consolidation is always needed, and then we can look on to bigger, better things, right? It's like like we do uh, think we are going to play out here. So, you know, if I were if I were to myself, if I were to make a decision on whether I'm going long or short, I'm actually going long on this. And I've actually put my money where my mouth is. I did set a um, buy order right here, right where the 89 expansion is coming in at the uh, low 11,100 level. And it did, uh, you know, it did uh, actually play out for me. So uh, I am putting my money where my mouth is. And uh, so you guys know. Um, so again, if I were to go anywhere short or long myself, I would go long on this. Okay, just just not financial advice. I'm just sharing what I'm doing with you guys. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the daily. We did get a close of the daily candle here, uh, not that long ago, about four hours ago. And uh, let's look at the daily, see how it's looking. Um, I mean, just more consolidation, right? It's looking it's looking still pretty healthy here. More consolidation. We did get a green candle. Uh, or I'm sorry, we did get a red candle uh, to correct a little bit, but not, you know, not a whole lot of price action in here. Um, and then, you know, this this being a brand new um, being a brand new candle here, it is it is uh, getting some separation from the 21. 
but it is being uh, held down or there's buying or selling pressure up here right where the 30 is coming in at. Uh, we'll call it uh, 11,550. Uh, that's that's where we last saw Bitcoin uh, kind of reach up to, uh, but then you know quickly came back down. I think we we at some I think the high of yesterday was 11,600. Uh, Might have been the prior previous day, 11,600 two days ago. Uh, previous high uh, of yesterday, 11,577. So pretty close to that. We didn't break out of this candle here um, uh, before the close of that um, of that daily candle here. Uh, the one that where my cursor is at the current moment. We didn't break above this line here. If we did, we, we could have probably tested the top of this resistance and probably, you know, played this move out. Uh, I am looking for the daily to get above 15,007. Uh, what was it? What was the previous high? 15,000, or I'm sorry, 11,577. That's going to be our key area for the next day and the next day if we don't break it. Right, so look for that uh, book market, bench market, whatever you want to do. Five, uh, 11,577. If we get above that, uh, then it's a definite retest of this uh, resistance line, and possibly again we could break out and play out this move. Okay, so keep that 11,577. That's that's our that's our our main point of interest at this point. Okay, uh, so daily again looking pretty good. It the the RSI is looking like it does want to retest the 21 down here. Um, and we'll have to see in the next day or two what happens here. See if we actually do turn down. It does look like it wants to flat, flatten out here. Um, so we could see some more uh, just, you know, lack of lack of volatility here. and Just more consolidation sideways uh, before we do make the move. Again, it's, it is flattening out. But it also looks like it might, you know, come back and, and retest the 21 here. I would like to see a bounce here if we do want to play out this move here to um, 12,500. All right. So that's currently where we're at. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at. I want to show you the monthly just to recap really quick what I've been telling you guys about and what this is, um, you know, what to expect in the next coming months. Well, I do have to switch to Bitstamp since they have a longer history with uh, of trading Bitcoin. Um, you know, I've been telling you guys why we should be very, very bullish. You know, I've been talking to you guys about this this move here. Uh, with Bitcoin's price action back in uh, November 2015, we did get above the 21 and onto the more bullish side of things on the RSI. And we remained there for about three years until the last bull market started about a year and eight months ago. And, uh, you know, usually once we break in and out of the bullish control zone, you know, those are very meaningful extended runs, right? Just like we did see once it got underneath the 21, it remained there for a very long time. So again, we have regained it here and we have uh, about roughly a little, little bit over two weeks. Uh, it is looking pretty flat here. Um, it is looking pretty flat, but we'll, we'll have to wait another at least another two more weeks to really get um, to really, really get resolution on what might happen here. Uh, obviously, if Bitcoin does go back to retest uh, 12, 13, 14,000, we should see the RSI get into the more bullish control zone and therefore continuation of this bull market or what we at least think is a bull market at this point. Right. So, uh, again, just wanted to show you that real quick. Uh, if you if someone asks you, why are you so bullish on Bitcoin? You might refer them to the monthly chart and tell them, hey, look, every time we get above the 21 exponential here on the RSI and get into the bullish control zone, we remain there and we actually reach for all time highs in a nutshell. That's what you can uh, um, tell any skeptic out there. Uh, all right, let's move back on to the lower time frames. We'll leave it at the four hour. Crank up a bit so we can fit it all in the screen. There we go. All right. So if you have any questions or uh, again, if you need any help figuring all this stuff out, let me know down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to um, answer any questions you might have. And obviously, let's look at um, let's look at some uh, altcoins. Uh, XRP did have a slight bounce and got up to the previous line of bottom support here. This again is just hanging into or hanging on to this this bottom area of support here, which is going to be very very crucial. If we do break below it, uh, we are going to come back down and retest. I think, in my opinion, uh, 25 cents. So really be careful here. Uh, this is a no trade zone for me with XRP. I do think it definitely wants to uh, break down and retest this down here at the 25 cents. Um, 
<clears throat> so, you know, just be careful with that. Um, the four hour is letting us know that, I mean, it's looking anemic. Um, look at the volume down here. There's literally no one trading it on. And Binance, again, being the platform with the largest amount of volume, there is none for XRP. So nobody's really trading this right now. Um, although this is on Bitfinex. Let's actually switch to put a T in front of it. And let's go to Binance. Same thing. There's nobody, nobody actually trading this thing. The RSI on the four hour looking like it wants to break down below the 21 uh, and just looking like it does want to go back and, and again, retest some prior lows um, down at the 25 cent range right down here. OK, um, so again, this is not a, it's a no trade zone for me uh, with um, with XRP. Let's look at the one hour, uh, see if the one hour looks any different. And it does not. It looks just very anemic. Again, not a whole lot of volume. Uh, it, it look, one hour looks terrible to me. Uh, it is a lower time frame, so you know, again, take it with a grain of salt. Um, it does look like it's on the more micro trend. It does look like it's forming a triangle here. Um, I mean, just coming down from this area here, we should get. You know, we should get. We're, we're pretty full. We're pretty full right now within this within this formation so we should get resolution here but it does look like it just wants to break down below this formation here before b below this area of support we do have a couple areas of interest here coming on the way down at uh 29 345 and then um 29073 right these would be areas of uh should hopefully um offer some support here but you know it, you're getting into very very dangerous territory uh as i was charting out in the uh bitfinex chart if we do break these two points of resistance then you know 25 cents just become uh a legitimate um end point uh, breaking down from from its current um price you're looking at about a 15 percent drop this seems very imminent, seems almost unavoidable uh, in, in what I'm seeing. So again, I could be completely wrong. I could be completely wrong, but um, that seems unavoidable to me at this at this very current moment. All right, let's move on to BNB. We'll do a couple more and then we'll, we'll finish it off. BNB um, did break uh, out of this resistance trend line here and went for a nice... Uh, nice run for about 14 and a half percent right uh, it is looking to it is looking like it's trying to fight um, and stay in the fight actually and by remaining above these moving averages which is uh, so far succeeding uh, the top line here the 30 the 30 simple uh, being used as support so that is uh, that is looking pretty good um, as long as Bitcoin doesn't go on a big massive dip uh, while Bitcoin has been consolidating to the downside, uh, BNB has actually been consolidating to the upside. So as long as Bitcoin doesn't go drop, have a major uh, dip, then I do think uh, there's going to be uh, plenty of um, plenty of support here. Uh, and we could potentially see another another move up. There's, there is not anything holding it except for previous resistance. This would be a next point of uh, interest to me uh, if we do break above this prior uh, high here at $30.58, then we could actually come back and retest this area right here at 31 cents, uh, $31.04, my, my, my bad there. Get a sip of water here. That is on the one hour. Let's look at something with a little more oomph to it. Right. So, yeah, we are looking pretty much in congruence with the one hour. RSI is looking like it, you know, just flattened out, just more consolidation here at this at this uh, current price here at thirty dollars and twenty two cents. Uh, looking like consolidation. We could, um, yeah, we could come back and retest the twenty one here, but you know the 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 twenty one on the RSI I'm talking about, or the twenty one uh, right here 
um, as the EMA here on the chart. This yellow line in here coming in uh, should act as plenty of support, have a bounce there, uh, and again, come back and retest the $30.59. Uh, so that is uh, in the shorter term of things, it does look like it, it has a it has some more room to the upside so as long as bitcoin doesn't break down and, and decide to go for another dip um all right so keep that in mind uh let's look at link really quick so looking at the four hour yeah rsi is not looking so hot right now it did actually uh pierce through the 21 ema here on the rsi trying to get into the more bearish um into the more bearish zone so in the shorter time uh, shorter uh, time frame frame does look like it wants to retest the 377 which is also coming in uh, along with the 382 there um, so i do think that would be my next area uh, of support it is within the signature of things because if we do get a if we do get stop here and uh, find support at the 377 or the 382 uh, it is also creating still a, um, a higher low which does indicate that we're still on the uptrend. All right. So even if we come down here to about $2.26, would not be a bad thing. Would not be, I would expect a bounce from this area here. And it, so far, it does look like it wants to come uh, come back in. So, you know, me being me trading uh, Chainlink, I would actually put a uh, purchase order right here um, at $2.25, $2.26. That's where I'd be, you know, picking it up. Uh, and then wait for a bounce there. That is like the seems like the more likely scenario. Let's look at the one hour. Yeah, the one hour also coincides with the four hour. Um, did look like it wanted to try to uh, at least uh, retest the 21 on the other side, but failed and is now coming back down into the more bearish zone. And again, you know, uh, it is coming in congruence with the four hour. Does look like it wants to come back, come back down here and uh, retest this, um, the 200 simple on the one hour, uh, which is coming in at $2.32. Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a pretty slight drop, but it does look again. It's it's looking pretty anemic in my in my eyes. It does look like it wants to uh, retest at least two dollars and thirty two cents at the very least. All right, uh, Litecoin and we're out. So Litecoin also pretty looking pretty anemic. That's the one hour. Uh, RSI cannot get above the uh, neutral control neutral. Um, the neutral control area uh, does not even want to come back and retest the 21 here uh, before just getting back into the bearish zone. I do think uh, this is our next area of interest right here. And let's change it to green so we know it's an area of support. So $83 is, is again, where I would be expecting. I would actually expect this to, to actually be front run a front run here and actually not not get as deep down into this previous pivot low here at uh, 83 cents almost flat i would hope that this gets turned around here um, before we get to this area because again we want to make sure that we set a higher low if we want to continue thinking that this is a an uptrend uh, but if we do get into this and we do get a bounce at the actual $83, um, you know, not not a bad thing. It doesn't look as bullish. I mean, I, I wouldn't think that we would get a bounce, a significant bounce anyway from there um, before retesting the, uh, the area of support at $83. So uh, not one that is very interesting to me. Uh, there has been a bit of a FUD with Litecoin as of late, having, um, you know, some people, actually this guy, Frank, who is one of the Litecoin Foundation managers, uh, calling um, Charlie Lee out on some of his latest endeavors, uh, going out to find new partnerships instead of focusing on the development of the protocol. And, uh, you know, just <laughs> it, it's it's not good to see when you have an infight going on within the same team, right? Um, and, you know, Charlie Lee going out and uh, pretty much asking Frank, the Litecoin Foundation manager, to stop the FUD, stop spreading more fear into the market in Litecoin. Uh, although he cannot deny, and he did come out and, re and tweeted this, he, he, he did come out and had a tweet storm. He tweeted about 16, a thread of about 16 different tweets, 
saying, yeah, although there is a lack of development on the protocol, it is because in part it is not needed since it is a clone, not a fork, but a clone off of Bitcoin's code. And, um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the same methodology that is being used in Bitcoin is also used in um, in Litecoin. So therefore, there isn't such a high need for developers uh, on the on the actual protocol. So, um, you know, shots being fired and Charlie Lee coming out to try and put out the, the, the fires. Um, I do think this is all temporary, but we do see it reflected here on the price of Litecoin just on a, on a downtrend. Uh, but not ready to get bear on it yet un un unless we break this area here at $83, right? If we do break that, I think we're going to go back and retest $79, all right? So um, keep those things in mind when you invest. Keep those things in mind if you are uh, thinking of hodling for the long term. Uh, this is a pretty low point in uh, recent Litecoin history. So, uh, I mean, it's it's not a super dangerous play in my eyes. Uh, because again, we <clears throat> we have bounced from this area plenty of times. One, two, three. Looks like we're going for a fourth time. Uh, although these these areas of support and also same goes for resistance. Anytime you have multiple retests of a certain area, then that area gets weaker and weaker every time we try it. So uh, again, just be very very careful um, when trading. Have these things in mind. I'll take these things into consideration before you go out and do something. All right, so that is all I have for you guys tonight. This was a longer video. If you're still here, thank you so much for joining. If you did get something out of out of this video in exchange for your time, definitely uh, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as well. And if you want to share this, this uh, video with anyone, uh, I wouldn't mind that as well. So thank you so much for joining. See you guys on the next video. Your boy, The Real Shots of 56. See you guys.